Part three, guys, I'm going to talk about recording here at the DJ desk. Right now, you can hear me clearly on the DJ microphone, which is channel seven on the Pro Tools and the third channel on the Focusrite. I'm using the S11 mixer here with a set of Technique 1200s, and the S11 output goes into the Apollo on channels 13 and 14. So if you're recording in Pro Tools, you need to turn on channel 13 and 14, as well as the microphone. All three channels need to be recording at one time. Your master level on the mixer goes to 13 and 14 on the Apollo interface. The booth level goes to the input select switcher at the video desk. The input select switcher at the video desk has A, B, and C on it. And if it's on channel A, then it is the rear speakers for the Dolby Atmos mixed down on the main desk. Channel B is if I wanted a booth out from the DJ equipment. And channel C is the local interface on the video computer. So in order for me as a DJ to hear the booth out that I can control up and down without it affecting my audio volume, I have to have the selector on channel B. In doing so, I'll be able to raise the volume, turn the booth volume off, and it will still be recording. So if I'm doing a mix, and I have my master level up, and my audio is being sent, I can turn the booth volume down to give my ears a break while I get my next record, or if I'm connected to a laptop, find my next song, talk to somebody who might be in the room, let the radio personality know that I'm getting ready to hit him with an instrumental out for him to talk over, whatever's the case. So, right then I turned my channel volume up. My master was already up, so you guys probably hear that in the recording. And then because my booth level is up, I'm able to hear that in the studio through those speakers located at the video station. If you wanted to hear what was being recorded through the speakers, you would switch it to channel A and then have to change your Pro Tools ins and outs. Right now it's set up to be the rear speakers of the Dolby Atmos mix down. So it's best to leave that alone, go to channel B on the input selector switch and then you'll be able to hear the booth. I just turned my master volume down so that you do not hear it come through the main audio recording but you can probably hear it in the background of my microphone. That will allow me to cue things up or get things ready before we start the recording process or before I'm ready to start sending it signal through my master out. Most DJs who are recording mixes will also record the mix in their Serato. If they're using Serato for their laptop, they can literally record audio and video mixes right on their computer. If you are not a turntable DJ and you have your own controller that you want to record with, we have deck savers. that you can put over the equipment and then place your controller on top of. This is going to be the only station where it's gonna be okay for you to take the wires out, plug them into your controller. Just please put them back where they belong when you are finished. That covers the DJ station, it's pretty simple. It goes out from here into there on channels 13 and 14. If you want to hear your booth signal, you need to change the selector switch to channel B. Okay. 
that will allow you to record on the Pro Tools or even at the video station because you have to send the audio to the Pro Tools computer in order to receive it at the video station. From there, you can then record your audio and your video mixed together at one time, but you have to use all three workstations. I'm going to use the DJ workstation. I need to dial up the proper audio at the audio workstation, and then I need to dial up the proper video at the video workstation. I can then hit record at the video workstation without even recording in Pro Tools. But it's going to give all my audio is going to be compressed, the music and my microphone. If I want individual tracked out audio, in case there's a mistake, I must also hit record on the Pro Tools at the same time. Then you have a backup audio individually tracked out that you can fix and manipulate as well as your video, which has the audio together. And you're going to need that anyway because you're going to want to line that stuff up in post-production. So if you're confident in your mix, all you have to do is bring in a thumb drive. I'm sorry, bring in a solid state thumb drive, plug it into our video switcher, just like in the gray podcast room video, and hit record, and you'll get audio and video together. Stay tuned next to see how to incorporate video in this room across every type of recording.